Yes, in the, uh, right in the weekend, I believe. Unbelievable, right? And so what I wanted to do was talk about this um, separation of data and display. And, hmm. and I thought I'd show you really briefly what I just showed the class, and we took 35 minutes to do it, but I'm going to do it in like five with you, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And then you can have suggestions for all the way, right ways to do it, as opposed to what I'm doing, mm -hmm. um, perhaps. So I started here um, with this table, and I wanted to I want to create this table and these tiddlers, so that this, so that these tiddlers get created in my wiki eventually. Um, I have a bunch of readings that have asked, you know links and titles and sources, and I kind of by hand with a lot of formulas generated a list of. 37 tiddlers that I want to create. And I just do this CSV output, JSON input. Um, and the idea here is that I do a lot of thinking about my writing, what I wanted to show, but my writing ends up writing tiddly wiki code, albeit in a spreadsheet that's ultimately going to get imported. And what I'm trying to understand is, is um, how does this, how, how does Tidly Wiki allow us to separate our data or our content from our display? And how is it integrated? Where can we not do that? Where can we do that? And how important is that to you as, a, as an author of Tidly Wiki? So I don't know if that gives you enough to play on um, or not. Just to give you an idea of what this looks like ultimately is these are all the tiddlers that I built. Um, they're all appropriately tagged. Um, uh, let me go to project templates, back to project. So almost all of the content that you're seeing here was in that spreadsheet. And now I'm curious to know, like, what did I do as a writer, as a designer? How much of this counts as content? How much of this counts as structure? Why do I care? And then, you know, how might I do these things differently? Or is this like an interesting way to imagine interrelated tiddlers showing up in a wiki. Is that enough to go on for you? You usually don't need much more than that. No, indeed. It's uh, <clears throat> um, an interesting question today, I think. Um, quite a tricky one. So um, this idea of separating content and presentation is at the heart of modern ways of thinking about how we should build computer systems and the web goes out of its way to try to observe that principle too so on most websites um, you can um, there is a way to view them without any styles um, so I'm not sure if you're in Firefox here but I'm in your, Firefox yeah can we just have a look at your view menu I'm not sure if they still have any of this page style what does that let us do no style Okay, so that turns off CSS styling for any web page. So it'd be interesting to do, go, go to a, a, a news page as well, maybe, um, and just, just to show you the principle. Um, but, um, so we've got the, with the web as we're used to seeing it with all of the styles, but if you turn those styles off, the web reverts to this sort of unstyled native state. Um, where um, things look like it was 1992. Mm -hmm. So um, this is a, a, a principle that computer science people have embraced long ago, this idea of just separating um, uh, content from the presentation. TiddlyWiki, in a peculiar way, um, inhabits a world where those rules are, need to be interpreted differently. Because as we know, the user interface of Tiddly Wiki is built out of Tiddlers itself. Um, and so within Tiddly Wiki, there is literally no technical distinction between content and presentation. They are the same things. So in order to create t content for Tiddly Wiki, you create Tiddlers. Um, in order to change the appearance within Tiddly Wiki, 
you create tiddlers as well. So my, so my confusion was reasonable. No, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually just at the beginning of riffing around. Um, I think what you've, you, you've lobbed out a, um, a, a, a question or a topic that has some interesting ambiguities and, and multiple layers to it. Oh, so, good. Oh, yeah. so, so that, that first thought um, is that TiddlyWiki disturbs those rules by, um, by putting all of your tiddlers in one pot, both the ones that appear content and the ones that are presentation. And we saw that in your spreadsheet, in fact. In your spreadsheet, um, there's a, a, a relatively small amount of, of information, um, and there's a certain amount of stuff like these list links calls um, that is essentially presentation. That's, saying, well, that's an interesting I, question. I want to have a list here. Yeah, so, so in your view, a list links counts as structure, not content, although the links themselves are content. Yeah, because that list is sort of latent. That list exists everywhere. You know, you don't need to write that expression, give me everything with this tag. That list um, is a category, a subset of tiddlers within, within your tiddly wiki, and it's always there. Okay. So choosing to kind of um, editorially include a particular list, that seems like a decision to do with, um, yeah, to do with the presentation of my information because I'm controlling where I'm presenting a list of... I would agree with that, yeah. And if we were in a bigger organization, the person who is charged with writing editorial content and making sure it's spelled correctly and it's grammatical and it's punctuated correctly and it's not plagiarized would make the list. But the person charged with design and structure would present the list. And the person charged with design and structure doesn't care if there's misspellings in the list. I mean, they, they might, but it's not his job. And a person charged with creating the list might care if there will care a lot if there's misspellings in the list. She'll fix it, but she doesn't really care where it's displayed as long as the list is. Oh, gosh, that, that's interesting. I mean, it's as if what you're pointing to there is that content versus separation reflects the sort of industrial revolution era um, view of you know, content preparation as an industry where we separate it out into its basic tasks. And um, when we separate out the vocations of those tasks, indeed, we come to content and separation being almost separate disciplines. And so it might be that the, the idea of needing to, needing to separate those two things actually reflects the fact that different people do them <laughs> um, in, in ordinary publishing. Yeah, Whereas in, here in the 20th in, century, but not in the 21st. Yeah, exactly. In TiddlyWiki, um, the author is explicitly uh, doing both things. And yeah. you know, that, that ability to shape your presentation to fit your story, um, I would regard as an important, you know, as an important uh, um, facet of TiddlyWiki's customization, I think. Yeah, and certainly when you move to things like interactive fiction and creating an interactive, the space, the programming, the, the, the yes. structure is so interwoven. It's like, it's, that's why I wanted to cover this topic and I wanted yeah. templates, because it's very hard to pull it apart in TiddlyWiki. Um, indeed, yeah. So I think, um, I think that would that would nicely summarize the idea for me, yes. Um, I think one of the things that you do in the course that plays nicely with this is this whole thing of um, remapping what might have been TiddlyWiki tasks into spreadsheet tasks. So I think you're doing a few things there. The fact that you're doing that both for presentation and structure and content um, shows the universality of the tiddler and how it represents all of those things mm. but you're also encouraging people by by having your tiddlers exist somewhere else in a spreadsheet you're encouraging people to see that structure um, as being separate independent from um, its representation and that seems quite powerful um, yeah, I, I do it I use spreadsheets because um, I can make, I mean, I suppose I could have done this elsewhere, but I can write simple formulas like here to go grab that over that column, you know? Yes. And um, you've, got, uh, you've got an automatability 
um, for sure. You've got the, the UI is sort of more accessible as well. You can see lots of things at once and directly click on mm -hmm. them. Um, and I really love that. I, mean, I, think, I think the, um, you know, when, when you look at what people who are adept with computers do, um, uh, one, of the, one of the most powerful things you can do with data is to transform it, transform it into a different form where um, the economies or the usability of doing things with it are different. So those, you know, tra a transformation is a more powerful thing somehow. Uh, transforming your entire wiki into a different form is a very powerful concept compared to, I don't know, just the the automation element, as you say, one could imagine duplicating those automation facilities elsewhere. Yeah. Um, but you're doing more than just availing yourself of automation techniques. You're also allowing yourself, it, it gives you the flexibility to think about the content in a different way. Um, and perhaps to make it, you said how this stuff can be inaccessible in TiddlyWiki. This is giving you a sort of bird's eye view of what's in TiddlyWiki and that can help people visualize it. Okay, yeah, so I, I guess I hadn't thought of it that way, but it certainly does, like, because I can now really visualize, like, on my, you know, if I have a bigger screen, I can even see more at the same yeah. time, but now I can see, you know, 18 or so rows, um, which means I can see inside 18 Tiddlers simultaneously, which is actually very, fairly difficult to do in TiddlyWiki itself. Yeah, I mean, we could, yeah. we could duplicate the spreadsheet display and wiki there's you're looking at a web page after all um, but I don't I think that, that misses the point I think what you're doing is more than just displaying diddly wiki in a grid um, so that you're transforming it into a spreadsheet so that you can treat it as a spreadsheet it's more than just um, displaying something in a grid well very much so because here you see a formula that looks this is a crazy formula for those who are not used to spreadsheet formulas and like anything else it gets sort of simple when you see it but it's not simple at all but all I wanted to do here was grab the first word of my Tiddler title. And there's probably a way faster. I can probably search for the space, but there's a reason I did it this way. I can't remember what it was. Um, you know, that wants to get every, all the words to the left of the word while and put it in the Tiddler and tag it, you know. And then over here, I want to get all the words to the right of the word while and put that and use that as my tag. So that's the that's what that's the the key to learning a little bit of of writing some spreadsheet formulas, um, and they look ridiculously complicated and they sort of are annoying to get to work. But they there's a lot of support for that, and I think that this idea of transformation of data is something that I had really not real focused on is something that we probably need to do as well. And I think that's what a lot of CID and IDT majors do uh, throughout is this data transformation, so, yeah. So I see what you mean, it's not just just being able to see it, which I could have done by typing the word transcluding there and writing the thing, mm. et cetera, but it's actually being able to generate the tags as well. Yeah, to be able to treat it as if it was a spreadsheet and to do all the things you know how to do with a spreadsheet. And I think we, as TiddlyWiki people, we might do the converse occasionally. I might be given a spreadsheet at work, say, um, and so hate the idea of manipulating it as a spreadsheet that I, manip that I transform it into a TiddlyWiki, do my manipulations, and then um, uh, export it again as a spreadsheet. Yeah, but, I haven't done the export yet. I'm gonna work on that. That's next. But I think the that ability to transform is somehow I don't know, it's arithmetically related to flexibility, you know, the number of different useful transformations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so I think last week we touched on templates. We did. And we touched on um, uh, the current Tiddler variable. And I think I did, I went through a little loop about it. And I think that it, um, we agreed that it was complicated. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if today it might be, I'd be really happy if the discussion um, kind of um, uh, took us back round to that point again. Perhaps we could rediscover it from a, um, from a different perspective because I think it's the, it's the critical, it's a really critical one. So let me, so let me walk through what we're suggesting and you might have some ideas about how um, the folks who are doing the guided development could actually implement this project. Okay. Um, 
So what I'm asking people to do is select two of the three writing practices that I, I identified, um, creating interactives, refactoring, and writing to think. Those are three different, those are, I think, three substantially different practices, I want to call them, mm -hmm. in which people engage. So they open up Tiddly Wiki and they say, what am I doing? Well, ultimately, I'm trying to create an interactive thing for my readers. Ultimately, I'm refactoring something I've written. Or I'm just thinking about something. I'm not just thinking. I'm going to use the process and act of writing to help form my thoughts. Three different practices. So I ask people to pick two, and then I want them to develop a way that templating as a technique could help those selected practices, those three practices. Okay. Um, and then I want them to say, well, suppose I decided I'm going to focus on templating while creating interactives is I want them to write in this tiddler what they did. So they're going to import this wiki and add to it, and then I should be able to export from theirs and generate a whole collection of ideas on these topics. So this is sort of hand federation in a way. Um, mm -hmm. So what I've done, though, is um, created a set of templates for the project and hypertextual techniques, practices, dimensions, objects, etc. And then back in the wiki, I actually built, in the spreadsheet, I actually built the templates. Um, here's the code. It's template, fairly simple. Um, and I asked them to all be displayed so that they can kind of get there quickly. And right now, the templates do nothing other than represent the title of the template. It's a sort of a debugging. My question to you is, what, do you, what would you do, or how have you used templates to help you engage in any of these practices that we're talking about. Um, and the, the, the example I came up with for writing to think was the new journal. Because a new journal is essentially, a journal is a template, right? In theory. So, so. <laughs> sort of, right? It, it could be. And um, so we came up with a new ideas template. Um, so suppose that you're, you're um, uh, how did we do that? I forget. Oh, you just have to tag it to new ideas, right? Yeah. Um, so you're writing a tiddler if you tag it to new ideas. And you could obviously create something. Um, this is my new idea. You might, I didn't finish it. Um, you might type it along. Here's your idea. Save it. And then this gives you an opportunity to say, is this a good idea or not? So it's sort of like a post. And if it's a good idea, it will be tagged good ideas, and you can go back and find the good ideas later. So it's sort of like tagging, but it's really building the tagging functionality into a template. Um, those are the kinds of thinking that I'm after to see if people can imagine different ways of using templates. And my goal here is that just by thinking about it and building a template, you'll learn about templates, which is really the underlying purpose of the project, of the exercise. Mm. So how do you use templates in any of these activities? Refactoring, do you, do you mark work off for future work? Do you say this is, you know, you use it as an editorial process guiding? Or do you do, do, you do a lot of this in your sort of day-to-day -day work with Tiddly Wiki using templates? Yeah, it's interesting. So, so um, uh, as, as sometimes um, occurs, you're asking a question I've never thought about before. Good. Um, uh, Picking it up, though, that's, I think the, the refactoring one. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the realm of software development, as we discussed, um, there's this idea of the activity refactoring, which is to fiddle with the software in a way that improves it. <laughs> um, and typically, you're trying, to, you're trying to inhabit this world where you, you in an ongoing way, you, you, you keep incrementally doing it you keep making these um, incremental improvements now in software there is therefore there ends up being a lot of discussion about how to write and structure your software so that it lends itself to refactoring so it's something we hadn't really discussed before is the I, there's this concept of refactoring and you can pick up any piece of code and refactor it because really making a change to it is to refactor it but this idea that there are specific things that you can choose to do as a programmer, which will make your subsequent refactoring easier. 
um, is, is a, a really prevalent idea. And I think there's an equivalent in Tiddlywiki. And there's, um, I mean, there's one very basic principle, which is absolutely designed um, to, uh, to, to, to promote refactoring. And that's this idea of cutting content up into the smallest possible chunks. Um, that that explicitly is because you want to do stuff with the content. If all you wanted was a one hour's stream of consciousness, you wouldn't need tiddlers. You could just pour it all out into, into one document. So there's a sense in which, you know, I've discussed, we've discussed in previous um, sessions how TiddlyWiki was very explicitly provoked by this idea of how could we make refactoring in a wiki easier um, and, and you know, how can we explore the usability of it. So therefore, it's not surprising that TiddlyWiki is riddled with, <laughs> um, with features which are essentially designed for refactoring. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that the sense in which templating applies, um, I think there's other features, for instance, we talked about lists, um, filters, all that stuff. Those things also have an impact on refactoring. Um, but as we've also discussed, um, the vast majority of those things um, themselves are also based on templating. So for instance, this idea of a, um, of a list, the list widget, if you've got an example of one somewhere, um, that um, the list widget repeats its insides, repeats its, what it contains once for each item in the list. Mm -hmm. so it treats the inside of the list widget as a, as a template. So templating, when we, when we think of the, the essence of what it is, a combination of two tiddlers, one tiddler saying, this is the tiddler that I want to display, the other tiddler saying, this is how I want to display it. This is actually um, at the heart. It's, it's the fundamental um, uh, computation that TiddlyWiki performs, and so therefore, you would, as you would expect, um, it's, uh, it's all over the place. So, so the widget and the journal widget, I don't know if it's actually a widget, but you're saying that those, those things actually run tiddlers through a template, but not one that we've called a template. Have a look on tiddlywiki.com. Have a look at the task management example. So this is an example of templating where there is no template tiddler, but you edit this now. Edit this tiddler. Oh, edit it? Yeah. So there are two list widgets in it. One for the... Oh, where'd he go? On the outstanding tasks one, there's the first line is list filter equals, and then there's an expression saying what tiddlers were concerned with. And then there's the, the, the middle bit, um, the check bit, um, that is repeated once for each tiddler that, that is generated by that list widget. So the line you're on now, that's, uh, that's identifying a whole list of tiddlers, uh -huh. all the tiddlers that don't have the field draft of, that do have the tag task, that don't have the tag done and sorted and created order. Um, and so, and then that, the bit inside this list, What's bit that tiddler? So that's so now. If you if you show preview or click done, you'll see that the text that you typed um, this list the checkbox for each tiddler that gets repeated because it's within the list widget. Everything within the list widget, within the start line and the end line of the list widget gets repeated. Mm -hmm. So so this is. And I, this is a great example of templating where there's no external tiddler involved, but where we've written a bunch of stuff, this checkbox, link, view widgets all combined together. Um, when we've, we've written them to apply to the current tiddler, and then the list widget gives the thing, um, you know, invokes the thing once for each item in the list, each time making the current tiddler be that item in the list. Yes, yeah, so this is actually how that rename tags function works, basically. Uh, yes, I think. Yeah, you might not have seen that. Okay. 
this one that I use. Okay, great. So this uses not a template. I, I, I'd say there is templating here, but there's no template tiddler. Yeah. So the template for that list widget is the content of the list widget, is the things between the, uh, the list widget and the closed list widget tags. But if I put this in a new tiddler, um, and call it a template, and put a filter on to um, Sometimes it's actually hard to get values out of a spreadsheet. Yeah, it doesn't have any likes in those cells, does it? Um, so this will, in effect, um, force the templating to happen inside of a template. Wow. I mean, you're now in a tiddler that you're deciding, or you were in a tiddler that you decided to call the template tiddler. But yes, I suppose. Yeah. So it's sort of, I used a template to accomplish the goal here. Well, the, what you're thinking of, the primary use of the word template there is this view template segment, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So what tagging something to make it a view template segment is precisely equivalent to sliding an extra line inside that original list widget that we okay. saw. And then applying that across multiple tiddlers that share a common tag. Well, that's done um, because if you tag something view template, then it's shown on every tiddler and then your content had something to say about tags that would, yes. So then, as usual throughout the semester, my view of templating, and you've been telling me this for weeks now, so eventually it guts through my thick head. My view of templating is a little restricted, and it's not just about using tiddlers that are tagged with view template, but about the concept of having repeated data show up sort of outside of your data itself. That's yes, and the, the core thing, if we go back to that task management example, yep. I want, to, um, I want to trash my changes. Yes. <laughs> um, um, the real heart of it is the checkbox line. So mm -hmm. inside that checkbox line, the, the middle of it is view field equals title. So just select that. Um, okay. So that that's a widget invocation. So the view... Um, the dollar view is a, what we call the widget. It looks and is syntactically equivalent to an HTML element, but it's got mm -hmm. a dollar sign in its name. And uh, this one is saying print out the specified text. And the specified text is the title field of, in this case, the current tiddler. So implicit within this view um, uh, view widget is the idea, yeah, exactly, that we... Um, What's happening there, Kieran? We're using the view widget to... So, let me interrupt you for a second, because I want to make sure that Kira and James kind of see what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. And what, um, what you're showing, in, showing us is an incredibly cool way to teach, too, because you can actually see it happen in real time, right? So mm -hmm. by changing the view field, what I'm going to... On the right... In the preview, I just, um, what else? We've got a modified. I know that that field exists. So whatever field I want there, if you, if it had a caption, it would display the caption. And if I want the link to be the modified, um, that would make no sense because there's no tiddler that actually has that modified. Right. But so, now, if you click, it click there, it'll create a tiddler. Yeah, create a tiddler with the modified date. Yeah, of the current tiddler. I mean, so, I why you'd want to do that? But you could. So the key thing is this magical concept of the current tiddler. The way that there is this thing called the current tiddler. The list widget ensures 
that here, the contents of this Lewis widget that you're writing are being repeated five times, but the value of the variable is different each time, and you're doing the right thing to illustrate this. So um, you can see that each of those five repetitions now includes this puts blah, blah, blah into play. Um, and you can see how each time that we're displaying the content of the list widget, the value of the current tiddler um, sweeps through the tiddlers that are being displayed. See how that's working? So we've said, give me all the tiddlers not tag, uh, without the field draft or with the tag task or without the tag done, sorted by created. It's given us that list. It renders them one by one um, through the template in each case, making sure that the current tiddler refers to that item. So in most code that I've ever seen, you'd have a do repeat and sort of a loop command yeah. that would tell you to go back. So yeah. it's almost like making a little subroutine. I mean, it's a it is exactly that, yeah. I mean, this is, Tiddly Wiki is an example of something called declarative programming, where instead of as you go in, in normal programming, as you go down, it's a sequence of commands that are done one after the other. Um, when you write tiddlywiki code like this, there's no sense in which that the list filter that you're editing now it doesn't come before the list filter that's afterwards. Uh, there's no sequence to them. Um, there's just a position to them. And of course, you can play with the exclamation points and change the sorting. An exclamation point any place re reverses yeah. what you're trying to do. Um, so if you wanted it, instead of not tagged done, if you wanted it tagged done, well, there aren't any. But if you, there were, they'd show up there. Um, and if you've been looking at the, um, this is precisely the logic we're using in the photo albums for Karen's project, the refugee photos. I don't know if you've seen that. Um, you know, so it's the multi, it's this all, we, we see this over and over again, and this is a nice way. Um, I didn't show you this weeks ago because I wanted you to suffer through more of doing it by hand, because I think it's a little hard to see it here. But now I think that you're kind of ready to, to do this, not suffer, that wasn't the right word, but, um, you know, to have an experience of, of how this would work, but this, this brings it together. So, um, well, you, you, you're in fact doing things in the intended order. So there's this list links macro that you use. Mm -hmm. um, that, to use that, you need to know about filters because you need to be able to write a filter describing um, the tiddlers that you want to create links to. Um, but you don't need to know about templating. You, um, to the list links macro, you just provide the filter and it does all of the rest. Right. And that's very, um, that's very, typical of tiddlywiki that we use the macro layer to create a um, the, a simple syntactic layer that's oriented towards the needs of the writer so list links is a useful thing that writers need and that's why it's there whereas the list widget and the checkbox widget the stuff the complicated stuff above those are the elementary primitives of tiddlywiki and they were not designed for ease of writing they were designed for minimalism. They're designed to be the smallest set of concepts that when wrapped around each other can do the things that TiddlyWiki can do. And so I think in the course, you've been, you've been tracking that nicely, that um, you've managed to, the, the, the most mind bending part of TiddlyWiki's internal design, we've kind of glossed over until now, this or, or last week and this week, this idea of, the current tiddler variable and how all of that stuff works. Um, that's the complex heart of TiddlyWiki. And that's, of course, why going back to our sequence of the, um, uh, you know, our layers um, that make up TiddlyWiki, that's why templating is so fundamental um, uh, because it underpins so many of the things that TiddlyWiki is and does. Okay. So I think to that, in that spirit, the templating exercise, which asks people to write them into template tiddlers, will focus the mind a little bit in those tiddlers, so you'll know exactly where your templates are coming. Once you master that, you'll probably be able to 
bridge out and put these at these little list filters, these kind of templating on the fly, if you will. Um, but my sense is if you don't put them in template filters, you, you're, it's going to be really hard to track down what's happening and, and to, to play with different kinds of templates. So, um, although this is a pretty cool way, I, I kind of get it and, and I like it. Um, but I, I still think it's best to write template filters for a bit. Uh, not template filters, template tiddlers for a bit. Um, so what we're looking here, so your view is that this composed ballad, Make the Beds, Kill the Dragon, Go to Mortar, that's all content. And the way it's rendered is all structure. That's all display. And in fact, we've not really looked at, there is a tiddler called composed ballad. Um, you know, that is uh, the actual data. Um, yeah, and so, in fact, even that list that we see rendered on the right, that's rendered from that underlying data. So I, I would see templating as being the key enabler for all the things that you mentioned. We talked about refactoring. The other two things on your list, I think, were, um, what were they? Refactoring. And writing to this. Writing interactives. And the third one was? Writing to think. And that's I'm the, sorry, writing? writing to think is the toughest one. There's a, writing to think, yeah. Yeah, the, the idea here, we, we talked about this in the, in the uh, first session this morning. So when you use the, there's all sorts of ways that people think. Some people walk to think, some people shower to think, others write to think. And so when your goal is to think, and you've decided the tool you're going to use is to write, then I say, well, okay, well, how do you do that in the digital environment? Most people imagine themselves sitting down and they'll say, oh, I do it on my computer and I want to push them a little bit and say, no, you don't. You do it in a piece of software on your computer. So you open a Word document, you have a blank word, and now you're ready to write to think. And I want to say, okay, let's do this in TiddlyWiki. You open a TiddlyWiki and now you're ready to write to think. What do you actually do? And are there any ways in which this concept of templating would help as you begin to write to think. That's kind of the the, 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 the the logic of this exercise. I think it's quite an interesting exercise as well because there's there's not an obvious answer. No, there's not. <laughs> the students are going to have to weave, um, uh, kind of weave a personal story to answer that question. Um, That's my goal. <laughs> very good. Very because good. rather than just saying, do this, get the skill, the do this, get the skills, make a template and make it work, but now you have to say, well, why am I doing this templating? The first half of the course, we spent a lot of time do this, make it work. We never asked the question, well, why would you want to do that? Just because you can. And that's a good enough answer. But in the second half, the answer, that's not a good enough answer. The answer is, well, I want to do this. And then now the question comes, well, how would you do that? And then take a step back and say, oh, by the way, show me how you did that. The, uh, uh, let me share one final thought on this idea of templates. Um, yeah. The... Um, we tend to, um, it feels to me <laughs> as though, um, the way that, um, the way that my brain works, um, is we describe things as being like other things. And then we describe the differences from that archetypal thing. So Steve is a teacher is the archetype in the middle. And then to distinguish Steve in my head, I've got things like the goats mm -hmm. <laughs> as, the, um, as the distinguishing features. And so we, all the time as humans, we kind of um, uh, try and ignore the common bits and we focus on the bits that are, um, the bits that are distinct. And this, so all humans share the same boring biological story every day with the same biological processes happening. On top of those biological processes, we're living our lives. When we describe our lives and we turn them into, us, into a story, we take out all the biological bits and we focus on the bits that are different. Um, and there's something, there's something similar going on, I think, with writing. But you can view writing in the same sort of way that we're trying to find that which is um, uh, specific to the task at hand. Um, and again, I think you get this idea that you prepare yourself for those kinds of activities by composing your text 
in this classic tiddly wiki way where we use templates to capture repetition so instead of typing the same thing repeatedly we type it once in a template and we reuse the template um but interesting i i think um for me this discussion it, it's sort of it's difficult and interesting and rewarding because I regard, as you've seen, templating as being this incredibly low-level part of TiddlyWiki's mechanism that underpins pretty much everything that it does. Um, and even some of the other important things that it does internally are best described in terms of templating. So that puts part of the discussion for me firmly in the space of um, uh, TiddlyWiki's mechanisms, how it's constructed. And yet, of course, we're framing the question around writing tasks um, uh, and you know, from that perspective, um, uh, those, those are orthogonal considerations. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to see like, how, what the results will be because I'm the, I really don't have answers. And I'm curious to see what ideas people come up with for how this, the very concept that you can run a template would be helpful. I, I guess the key, the way that we've structured this exercise is the way that you kind of get into a template, and it's all going to be almost post-writing, right? So if I'm writing to think now, and I've opened up my tiddler, and I'm about to engage in the process of like, you know, um, I want to think about, um, thinking about templating, whatever I write here, I can't invoke a template at this point. Is that fair enough to say? Unless I tag it to something. Well, you can. You can invoke an existing template. He, by here? Yeah, you could type in, the, if you typed in the body of a tiddler, um, uh, open double, uh, uh, sorry, open um, curly braces, um, then double vertical bar, and then uh, a template name, and then closing double braces, then that template would be um, rendered that with the tiddler that you're in being passed as the current tiddler. So, right, so that's passed the current tiddler, which is thinking about templating um, through to that template. I, see. I, think, I think what you're seeing there is the old view template that you'd already said. Yes, about. I think so. Yes, I want to. So, yes, one. Um, uh, invoking a template is just two characters different than invoking a transclusion. Um, and um, that's kind of, I didn't intentionally design a syntax for that particular case of templating. It just kind of fell out of needing to extend the transclusion syntax. But so what we're doing now is rendering the phrase, this is the text, through that template, right? That's right. Yes. So we are um, in uh, here. We are trans. We're identifying the tiddler to transclude. This is the, which is the tiddler called. This is the text, and the tiddler containing the template. This is to be used to render it, which ah. is techniques being practiced. So then I need the tiddler called. This is the text for for that to exist. Yeah. And it doesn't show here because... Your techniques being practiced template, what's in there? Um, probably not much. Um, it just lists... Um, it just lists its name. Yeah. But you're, you're not making it through that filter because... Um, the tiddler we're in doesn't have the tag technique. Ah, I see. Okay, so we're not even getting into that. Okay. If it, uh, okay, so it's, yeah, it gets a little complicated in a sense. But this is also how we do sliders too, right? Um, well, yes. Yeah, so sliders are implemented as a template. Yeah. Okay. So, so there's um, lots of different play, places to, fill, to, to play with this um, in different ideas and I guess the that you've really you've broadened my thinking about templating 
to be any time you try to stuff the contents of a tiddler through a through some sort of a well a template <laughs> that's going to then tell you what to do with the stuff in that tiddler. Yeah, I mean, you you were using the word templating for also for that new tiddler context, mm -hmm. which is pretty reasonable thing to do. Um, uh, but um, we actually call that a skeleton tiddler to specifically distinguish it, to try and keep the word, you know, there are lots of casual word uses for the word templating and inside TiddlyWiki's documentation, we try to keep the word template for this very formal, um, specific idea of templating. So explain that again. So I started with a new tiddler. You, you, when you, when you created a new journal tiddler, you were saying, well, the journal tiddler is essentially a template. Each time I press the new button, I'm stamping out another version of this template, which is a reasonable um, way to think of the new tiddler button or the new journal button. Um, but internally, we don't call that templating because internally we try and keep it so that there's, the word templating only refers to a single mechanism, which is the one we've been talking about the mechanism used by the new journal button, um, which is to um, stamp out a new skeleton tiddler. We call it a skeleton tiddler rather than a template. So a skeleton tiddler is what you would often call a template, a copy of you know, a, a, um, an archetype of something that you can stamp out additional copies of. So that's conventionally very common to call it a template and yet in wiki we've got ourselves to this sort of special linguistic place where we actually reserve the word template uh, our very specific you know wiki style templating um never occurred to me to use a different phrase um now i can see that if uh, you know, we, we've made points before about neologizing that this maybe the flags are up and this is something that would have deserved a better name. So um, the flags are that templating already means something. So in order for people to learn TiddlyWiki, they have to unlearn whatever they think templating means and then learn what it means specifically in, in this context. And that for me, that's often a sign that you should neologize. You should create a new word because okay. you're better off without the baggage of the existing word. Well, I think actually now that I come to understand it a little differently, I agree with you that the new journal doesn't really count as a template. It's like building a skeleton template. So it's telling you what you want the thing to look like before it exists hmm. and saying, when you ask for this to be created, this is what I want it to look like. This is the structure. That's sort of like a template, but I can see where a template is really, if you want to reserve templating for taking an existing tiddler and stuffing it through a, some kind of set of instructions for how it's to be displayed, it has to exist before you can apply a template to it. That's, I, I guess, so, the, so, um, so back to my notion there, if the way that I've described and introduced templates, it's all post creating a tiddler by tagging it to so it picks it up in the view template and then it tells it how, that you tell the, you, you provide instructions to a tiddler for how to have it displayed. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're writing to think, maybe you have to write in a certain structured way. Maybe you can't just do it such, in such an open-ended way. I'll have, to, I'll have to play with that. It's interesting. Okay. Um, I think that creating interactives and refactoring a little clearer. I, for refactoring, the idea that I had there was that you could use templating to manage your processes. This is a draft. This is the final version. This needs to be audit. This needs to be copy edited, and you could. Do, it's tagging, but it's templates that are going to give you that interaction, the ability to interact with tiddlers that have been written, and then to kind of categorize and tag and and move them around, um, and to see only certain fields and not other fields, etc. So it help you in your sort of refactoring, I guess. Writing to think I'm struggling with, to be honest. I'm very curious to see if people come up with ideas because I haven't come up with many. Um, and the creating interactives is pretty obvious to me is you, you have different set of object types. Um, just like I have in this templating exercise, um, you have different kinds of object types um, and they all get their own template. 
So when you're displaying project dimensions, when you're displaying project objects or techniques being practiced, whatever, they're going to be displayed differently. That to me is the creating an interactive approach. So I see lots of that. Um, well, thank you very much. That was, um, I think, instructive and in, in, in templating. And um, I will move our conversation along next week um, to the next topic. But I kind of have to wait and see how the first the results from the first exercise were, which I'm going to start looking at today, to kind of make sure that I know where we're headed for the next one. That's a long way of saying, I don't know what we'll be talking about next week, Jeremy, but we'll be talking about something. But I think he left anyway. We lost you, Jeremy, but that'll work. So let's wrap this one up. Bye, Jeremy. Nice to see you, and we'll talk again next week. I'm going to stop my share.